Hello my viewers. I'm falling behind on trying to get my videos out as requested by some of you. This video is about what the numbers on manifold gauge represent. And to play along you'll need a set of manifold gauges and a PT chart with both R22 and 410A pressures and temperatures listed on it. First, let's take a look at the compound gauge. The compound gauge is called a compound gauge mainly because it reads pressures in PSIG, which is pounds per square inch gauge, and also also it reads inches of mercury which is a vacuum you see it's 10 inch you can see the 10 inches 20 30 inches of mercury which is a vacuum this is why the low side gauge is a called a compound gauge here's the high side gauge it reads PSIG now if you look at both the compound gauge and the high side gauge, you'll see that it has some inner rings. My gauges have inner rings set up for R410A, R22, and R404A. These are pretty much the most common refrigerants now that an HVAC technician will use. Okay, now to show you an example, we'll go to the PSIG scale, go down to, we'll say, a nice even number, oh, let's see, 100 PSIG, and then we'll go over to the R410A scale, see, right there, go down here, and that corresponds with 32 degrees. If we look here on the compound gauge, 100 PSIG does correspond with what would be 32 degrees here on the compound gauge on the R410A scale. Now let's do this using R22. We'll go down to a typical number for R22, which would be about 70 PSIG. And we'll go over to the R22 scale, which is here in green. That's 41 degrees. Now let's go over to our compound gauge. And we'll find 70 PSIG, which, let's see, 50, 55, 60, 65, and here's 70, right there, right where the tip of my thumb is. And we'll go over to our R22 scale. And yes, it's about 41 degrees. So again, this PT chart corresponds with the numbers here on the compound gauge. Okay, now here on our high side gauge, as you can see, let's take a number that's kind of high, but not really too high for a refrigerant, say for like R410A take 500 PSIG and there it is and to figure out the temperature here in this in the corresponding ring for R410A you sort of have to eyeball between the 130 and 140 and that's probably going to be about oh I don't know 100 and 34 or so, okay? But to be sure, take a look at the PT chart. We'll go down here to 500 PSIG, and then we'll go to our 410A scale right here, and look at the corresponding temperature, which would be 134 degrees. And by the way, they do make a PT chart for individuals who use a metric scale. 
All right, I think we can take this another step in the direction of trying to calculate superheat and subcooling. Now that you know what the numbers mean on the compound gauge and the high side gauge, let's figure out how to calculate the superheat. Okay, let's say for example you're getting 75 PSIG and you're using R22 and you have a 74 75 PSIG reading here okay and you're using R22 you can estimate your evaporator temperature here or you can do it the easier way simply by using the PT chart okay let's say 74 PSIG that means that you have a 44 degree evaporator alright let's just say you have a clamp on temperature probe on your suction line and you want to calculate that superheat and let's say I was getting a temperature reading of about 50 degrees okay so let's see at 74 PSIG right uh, we let's see our evaporator temperature was 44 degrees and however our suction line temperature was 50 degrees so let's calculate the superheat and I can tell you right now it's six degrees okay I mean if you really want me to do this longhand I will just for the sake of whatever say okay borrow a one from our five put our four here at six and zero so that's six degrees like I said now I understand that's a bit on the low side I didn't even have my gauges hooked up I was using 74 PSIG just as an arbitrary number to show you how to look that up on a PT chart for the evaporator temperature. The chances are if I connected my gauges on my machine it would probably give me uh, uh, some reading like maybe 65 PSIG okay and okay let's try something here. It's 65 PSIG or even 64 we'll say just to make a round number uh, we'll go to R22. That's a 37 degree evaporator. So, just for just for the sake of things, let's calculate that. That's a 64 psig reading. Okay. All right. That would be with a 37 degree evaporator um, and we had a 50 degree uh, suction line now let's calculate this this is probably more realistic so we'll borrow from the 5 make that a 4 and uh, 7 from 10 is 3 3 from 4 is 1 and so now here we have 13 degrees so you see this is a 13 degrees superheat and that's more of a realistic number